conversation stop it? Let us say this. If you ask the average child in elementary school today, and particularly even a few generations back, uh, how did your family become known as Smith? They will tell you. Either, oh, that's my grandma's name, or my grandma's side, or my grandpa's name. And you ask them, well, where did they get it from? Oh, they got that from the slave master, which means they're not ignorant. Which means they knew the truth. They did nothing to correct it, did they? That's a contract. It's called acquiescence. So it automatically gives their corporate state jurisdiction, which, which the modern word used for the slave is called ward, W-A-R-D. Ward of the state. And state, not the land, state the corporation. Then you have boards of governors that govern all the states and the commonwealths. Their responsibility is to protect the stock, stock, S-T-O-C-K, of the citizens. Negroes, blacks, and colors are stocks, starting with the birth certificate and any other contract you make with them. If you don't understand that, get that together, real quick. Do you understand it? Then you understand why they incorporated you as a, as a being. And it doesn't make corporation itself bad. It means understand what corporation is and understand when someone creates a corporation and tries to pull you into that jurisdiction whether or not you belong there or if you agree to it. I.e., whether you challenge that jurisdiction that they created. And what they did, they created Negro, Black, and Color, a set of Christian Black codes from the church that set up a system in governance that dealt with the movement of these living beings, which is called chattel property, in a bureaucratic manner under wardship status, wards of the state, as stock being held by the European families with these Asiacs who bear their name, which indicates them as property. And all certification certificates, etc., relative to those matters, are f liens are filed against it by the Europeans, and therefore they can smile on your face and you never know they own you. And then when you get bad treatment, they give you an argument, and that argument is called racism, prejudice, and stuff, and you argue that, and they really stole your birthright. And everybody knows that, but that kind of spoils the game that they've been playing on our people. 1871, you see the point? When they uh, incorporated, turned the republic into a corporation in order to put the Moors later, uh, as they did earlier, solidify the 14th Amendment artificial person in the state of Delaware as Christian property. This is why such persons is called Negroes, Black, and Coloreds, and what do they call themselves this week, can't vote with them names that don't belong to them, except that the overseer, or what you call the CEO, through the Senate, agrees that their cattle can vote. As three-fifths persons, because they have no name and nationality. When you understand these, the history from a law perspective, your view will change from it just being some historical flaw or some little dirty trick that the Europeans do, you would need to understand its political ramifications. Because you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. And this is where, under the Christian Black Codes, where they set up where the marriage license is registered in the Department of Commerce, then registered in the Department of Orphans, and this is where your children, even before they're born, become wards of the state, which is a legal term for nice slave. And see, nobody's offended because they know that most of our people don't read law, and so they just hear the word, and it's, it's interesting, you know. And then the scholars ain't going to tell them because they're playing this black game. Do you understand? When they know these people aren't black. The Morris Divine National Movement, in some ways, is a reenactment of the Freedman's Bureau that was closed in 1870, which was supposed to be a reacclimation of your birthright giving you back your names, your religion, your principles, and bringing you back into the constitutional fold. And what did the politicians do? They robbed the money and closed it. That's how they enslaved you. You've been gamed. And you've been gamed by your own people who sold out, even in this movement. So you need to understand the principles. Remember this. Do not go by, oh, you like this guy, you like that woman? Oh, they sound good. Oh, they dress nice. I like the way they talk. Bull. Principles is what you operate on. That's how you tell who's who. Because the principles are based in fundamental truths that don't change or pass away. Measure them by the truth. Deal. When you're talking jurisprudence, they'll tell you law. It ain't law. It's jurisprudence. 
When you measure it, and you measure anyone dealing in government, measure them by the Constitution. Don't measure them by a party. Don't measure them by what they say. Only if what they say harmonize with their limited delegated authority that we gave to them to govern your affairs. They're servants. But what they've done is made you the servant. That's the corruption. Do you understand that? You are operating conceptually that this is supposed to be this way because this is government, you know, and you got paper. They don't really represent you, they're thieves. That take, took over your government. And, and then, as an example, you see the Constitution says, Article 4, Section 4 guarantees for every state in this union a Republican form of government. And then you turn around and you tell your children this is a democracy because the politician told you that. And you don't even challenge it even in your own mind. That's slavery. And it's a pact you just made with them. And so you've created, you've agreed to a fraudulent jurisdiction that they created. And then it makes it legal because you agree. But some adults have difficulty handling that. You need to pay attention to their obligation. The Constitution is their obligation. That's not some instrument that, oh, you know, it's interesting if you all know something about it. And if you don't, oh, it's not important. Why do you think politicians don't teach Constitution to the children in schools? Because that's the document that gives them the authority to do what, everything that they're doing. Without the Constitution, there is no government. Once you understand that, you understand where you need to be to protect your Moore's birthright. And the Moore's birthright is to protect the Constitution and to enforce the Constitution. The abuses that you've been getting is because that document has not been enforced. It has not been enforced because you ain't been in your proper person. Y'all been busy being colored people. Do you understand where I'm from? So concept of mind, get out of it. You're not Negro, black, and colored, and you got to be that, not that, officially. That's what nationalization process is for. That's why he did it. Do you understand? These have political ramifications. So it changes your political status in the society for the record. That's number one, because it's documented now. You see what I'm saying? So that gives you a standing at law across the world. Now, do you know what to do with that? That's the next issue. Do you know how to proceed with that? Those are the parts of the information that was suppressed by the subversives, COINTELPRO, etc., that was inverted into this movement with the FBI, CIA, etc., which is really the OSS to subvert this movement. Having the people think it's a religious movement when actually it's a movement to bring people back into the constitutional fold of government and to enforce that constitution for the protection of all the peoples. But he knew that they could not be protected as Negro, black, and colored because that's a category of a caste system. It's not human. It is not human. It does not pertain to humanity. It, it is outside of the human family, therefore outside the law, therefore outlaws because they want you to think it's an identity colored means actually artificial person means a fake single lakum as distinguished from that which is real so they need promoters to make you think it's real to take you out of the human family now you come under the black codes this is where your abuses come from legally because it's an agreement because every man woman and child must honor their mothers and fathers you're no different I like I, we like to think we are but you're really not different. So what do you do with outlaws? Do whatever you please to do with them, particularly if you have power. This is the arrogance that the magistrates have been using as judges. Do you understand? Because they know the people don't have rights because they won't claim them. Not, and then the people think that the only way they're going to get them is that if they give them to you. Governments do not give rights. Governments are established to protect existing rights. Those rights are inalienable that is in reference to government. And the inalienable right is derivative of your birthright, which means it's non-transferable. It can't be sold to you. You can't license it. Once you understand that, hold them to it. And they're obligated when they take that oath of office to uphold that constitution. And if you start talking about Republican Party and Democratic Party and all that kind of crap, and you start getting into their private matters because it's private policy, and you let them enforce that crap, you just gave up your birthright. This is what has happened to us. So whenever you have an issue <clears throat> before any court and you want to argue an issue, no matter what it is, and this is where people get trapped, 
Now I'm going to ask you, little sister, little sister, princess, princess. You ever heard the, the, the name or the word America, Americans? Are you familiar with it? You hear it a lot, don't you? Now I'm going to we're going to run through a test. I'm going to show you something. This is a real key that you can use in law, etc. Whenever you somebody's trying to trap you, look how subtle it is. Uh, what do you know about that word, that name? You can talk a little louder, honey, because right now you're the teacher. I know that people that live in America are Americans. Hmm. I know that people that live in America are Americans. All right, where's America? Geographically located. All right, let's look at this. You see here, the Falkland Islands, huh? Yeah. You see the tip of Argentina, Chile, huh? Yeah. It's Argentina, Chile, right? Yeah. You see up here, Alaska? Yeah. Huh? You see up here, part of Greenland up here, just, just uh, up here, just below Greenland? Yes. Or next to it? Huh? Yeah. Latitudinally, coming down here. You see these islands here? Yes. You see down here are one of our old sacred places, Easter Island? Yes. That's America. Central, North, South. Tell me who's the American president. George Bush. Oh, he's the president of, of Brazil? Because that's the United States. You know that's the United States of America, don't you? Because it is. You know El Salvador is the United States of America. Did you know that? No. Mexico is the United States of America. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's because they cheated you in school. They did a deliberate dumb down so that you wouldn't understand that United States is a generic term. That's just like me saying woman or girl. So if I say woman or girl, am I addressing anyone specifically? You can answer, but you don't have to, do you? But if you assume that you're the only woman in here, you'll say that loosely, would never even give it a second thought, wouldn't you? Then all they need to do is create a fraudulent jurisdiction that's assumed and you don't challenge it, then they take you in it, and they have no authority whatsoever. There's no such thing as the American president. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as the American flag. It doesn't exist. Because everybody around the world knows that the United States is a corporation, not the land. And our people keep calling the United States Corporation Company the country, which gives them the sovereign right, because you're the heir. Whatever you say, you've just assigned them. Then they call them Americans and call the country America, which you just assigned them to the sovereign. Which means these people don't even know geography. America's not a country, it's two continents. They're incompetent. And don't understand that when they say those things, in law, it's what you say. What you mean is irrelevant. What you said is what it is. And this is what makes it dangerous for our people to get this information and not be given law. Because their arguments will be based in emotion, totally correct emotionally, totally correct uh, symptomatic, but in law, legally dead. Seven continents, name it. <laughs> no, don't look at the ceiling. China. Seven continents. <laughs> No. China is a nation. No, America. America. No, no, stop. Let them, let them name. Let me. This is a demonstration. Pay close attention to this because this is, this is what I'm telling you. This is what I need you, honestly, to really get. What you're demonstrating is what I'm trying to give you in the conversation past week and today. And trusting that you'll get what I'm saying to you. All law is specific. As soon as you're outside the law, they can seize you. Because ignorance of the law is no excuse, and the law begins with you, Islam. I, self, law and master. And if you don't know yourself, you can't know law. Let's not get emotional with this. We're only here to try to bring the law back to the people. But if you don't absorb it, don't worry, we're going to try to make sure you have, have it. But please do never, ever get defensive when we challenge what you say. It's only an opportunity to teach. Seven continents, two of the seven continents are America. 
As a matter of fact, America is the only of the continents that come from the northern hemisphere of the universe, across the celestial equator, and even into the southern hemisphere of the universe. And it has multiple jurisdictions, and it has a isthmus and a multiplicity of islands, and all of them are America. Now, when you, on the Roman occupied information or misinformation, think that America's a country, already you're under the sorcery. And don't even know fundamental geography. Understand that's a training. They have jurisdiction over your person. So if you don't understand that, you can't be talking about some possessions that you've secured in this territory when you don't even know the geography. Particularly, you don't even know, therefore, the political jurisdiction. Therefore, you cannot call the law or any treaties on the planet to your defense of your person and your property. If you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. If you don't understand that, get that together real quick. Then we'll start discussing other things. So to that point, and it's not that I'm dismissing anything that you're saying, I recognize that's a waste of time I need for you to recognize it, and I'm doing my best to make you understand it, that a foundation must be there before we can discuss you securing a damn thing. But I need for you not to accept that from me. I need for you to understand the sequence that I presented to you lawfully, and for you to examine it and see your failure. The plan don't like Negroes and blacks because they're always trying to be somebody that they're not. <laughs> trying to crash everybody else's party. Of course, it doesn't seem that way on the surface, does it? <laughs> do, do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Going around playing to be Smith, Jones, and Johnson, and one Smith, Jones, and Johnson, you can't transact business as Smith, Jones, and Johnson because you're acting as Smith, Jones, and Johnson's agent. <laughs> and so he got you on stock market as, as, as an agent. So when you sign that name, you're simply signing as an agent. Ain't your stuff. Hmm. The point is you can't transact business in another man's name and then claim any allodial property or right of title. That's why they always get certificates of titles. And they don't even know the certificate of what title is because they don't study law. See the problem? You know, and so all these things which the Europeans have been using to take advantage of our people because they don't study and it doesn't fit their beliefs. And here we go. There is a such thing as American president and American flags that come from here on up and all across all these islands. So when somebody comes before you and starts talking law and starts talking that he has a jurisdiction over matter, the first thing is what you're supposed to ask him, oh, I have no problem. Where's your nationality card? That's for one. Then your certificate, delegation of authority order, that proves the jurisdiction of whichever America you're talking about and whatever constitutional government you are aligned with. Then we can start talking the subject matter. Maybe, if I feel like it. Because you haven't even proven, George, you haven't even proven who you are. What happens is we keep on assuming people have jurisdiction because they can say, you know, sis, I'm the agent of the left-hand side of the people, <laughs> sir, incorporated. Where's your $5 from that bill I sent you? And you start saying, oh, man, I didn't get my second job. And, and you, start talk, you start talking the subject. You start talking the jurisdiction. You give the jurisdiction because you haven't recognized that I didn't even establish it. Meaning that no one has authority in civilization or in government unless verified by the sovereignty of the people. Governments are established to protect do you understand? And preserve and secure the existing, pre-existing rights of people. That's called inalienable rights and is more relative to what birthrights are. Do you understand, sister? I know not immediately, but I started off with you being involved because you need to recognize, and that is us plurally, that when somebody starts throwing that American loose to you and, and, and United States court, and the United States this. They can be talking about this. They can talk about this. And if they don't have any allegiance to that Constitution, they haven't set it up, they didn't prove anything to you. They can have you in some pirate court, and you don't even know it. And you 
agreed to it because you allowed the jurisdiction because you didn't challenge who they are in the first place. And you believe them, you keep believing them, then they put nigger leaders out who got these feathers on in secret, and they're usually a reverend with 33 degrees, playing dumb like he don't know what that fez is. You only do that with people who really believe that they're niggers, because that's Christian property. And all your Christian ministers, 99% of them are 32 and 33 degree masons, got a Moorish fez, and in secret in their rituals, they, uh, how they say, what is Jesus' favorite statement? How did Jesus greet the people? He spoke Aramaic. He says, assalamu alaikum. That means peace be unto you. But then if they told him that, they got to tell him the rest of the history and why one of the first lessons they get in all secret societies is Ruth the Moabitess, his great-great-grandmother. Because Moabite is the ancient name for the Moors, who are the people today, got hair like lambs, wool skin like burners brass, that think human beings are crayons, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so we have this kind of problem with uh, our people not knowing who they are and it's fine on one level from an intellectual pr perspective. Problem is, is that they're not aware of the legal ramifications. But the Moors know this. You know the Masons know this. You know the Jesuits know this. You know government officials know this. You know the industrialists know this. But everybody's silent. Why? It's not to their economic benefit for these troops to be out. This is why all of your rulers in secret are Masons and wear a Moorish fez while pretending not knowing who the Moors are. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But the Moors have a charge. They have a nationality card, don't we? They decided not to be their brother's keepers, didn't they? Didn't they? Didn't they? Remember at all times, one of the things that really got a lot of the secret societies upset and government upset that really kind of broke the back of this thing that started this whole cycle in 19, early 1900s when New Drali started the Moorish Divine National Movement and one of the first things he did was start issuing the indigenous people their nationality cards. That began a cycle that they didn't understand at the minute, at the moment. But what it begins to establish is the true jurisdiction or true sovereign of the land. But if it's not used properly, you can't understand it. Do you understand? The fraud of a driver's license is not in your interest. When they gave you that driver's license, it was to incorporate you as a corporate person, was not an instrument for identification. Is everyone aware of that? You aware of that? Everyone aware of that? What we have to do as, as free Moors is begin a process and a consciousness amongst the people to neutralize that instrument. Some of us use it now because of whatever purposes to transport, etc. but understand that it's a commercial instrument. It is not your identification, your pedigree, bloodline, anything like that. And you'll notice that all driver's license have it, uh, the, um, the nomen written in all capital letters, which you all know, which indicates a corporation, an artificial person, an instrument. If you understand conceptually what that really represents, back to the nationality card, your concept of mind makes that card operable, not the card. If you don't understand that conceptually, that card in any document you get, it's only a document of stuff. Man, this is deep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to make them do Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, it just means nothing. You go out there, and then all they need to do is challenge you on the nature of that brief. And they'll quickly understand that you don't understand it. You went to 7-Eleven, copied it, and some, or somebody sold this thing to you, and you're under the concept that inalienable rights can be sold to you in a package which immediately shows that you have no concept nor respect for governmental principles. At that time, it's rejected. And you'll say, oh man, that failed. I gotta go buy another paper. And you get caught up in that paper chase. When the real deal is, if you understand what that really means in this concept, that's all the documents. All the documents peripheral to this 
are only supportive. They're supportive of the activation of this. This is passive, isn't it? And it's a statement that's on here, right? Passive. Put it in the abstract and then regurgitate it, then it lives. If you can't, your concepts are wrong and you don't understand it. And not that you shouldn't have it, but you should have it because it belongs to you. But whoever gave it to you didn't tell you the truth. So when you or I or a brother or sister here who knows walks up to a brother or sister on the street or in the Bronx or in Los Angeles or in Hollywood or in Louisiana and try to school them, they think you're trying to convert to them some kind of religion because you're Muslim. They don't even know that Muslim means the body. Why? Because some Asiatic corrupted agents with the Europeans got people thinking that, well, you know, Muslim means one who submits to the will of Allah. Muslim is the physical body, even the Europeans are Muslim. It's muscles and tissues and bones. The manifest feet is coming out of the womb of woman. Everything that lives here is Muslim. You submit to Allah because you ain't got a choice. And the sun shines on the good as well as the evil. And you eat and breathe and take up space. Now show me all the rules that we going by. That's here. That we can subvert that. Is that a fact? You see what I'm saying to you? But what blocks people is their quote unquote fictional taught belief systems. Their deification. There's no such thing that you come to me super duper god taji guy and I got some package to sell you that functions with execution of the function of your birthright. No, it's constitutions for that. All documents are in supportive or in support of our the enforcement of our constitution. And anyone that deals with the documents from government, etc., that doesn't recognize that or pretends they don't recognize that is a liar and a thief. Because they're already obligated to it. But in order to attack the deification, which is sorcery, you can't tell them that they're under the rule of sorcery. Because they, one, won't believe you. One, two, they'll think you out to lunch. Three, they'll think you're a witch. And everything else. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So you got to bring them back to the earth from an intelligent and scientific point of view. So you're going to have to dig up what the Inquisitionists didn't bury. Do you understand? Then you're going to have to take what they got and decode it. But you've got to decode it with your third eye. You've got to see what the common people can't see. It's a state of mind again. When you acquire that state of mind, they can give you any piece of literature and you can break it off. So let's go right underneath the same down black, down. black, right, in the dictionary, and it says a compound word. We know children. Let's go back to children's lessons. What's a compound word? to put together. Oh, go ahead, girl. Oh, serious. Let me get myself together. A compound word is two or more words put together to make another word, right? So it has right here in the dictionary, black a uh, more. And it has the part of speech right under it. Next to it says noun. And it says, a black person, man or woman, Negro. Then it has in italics, black and small case, plus, then it got more capitalized. There's an identity right there in, in, in the uh, dictionary. So now it separates the adjective from the noun. You see that? See, black or more. Any dark-skinned person, especially an African Negro, earlier black, small case, then more. And see how the black is all case, which means a straw, and it's separated from more, which is a capital letter, there's the identification of these people who think they're black, right in the dictionary, see that? Mm -hmm. Spell it. M-O-O-R. All right, see how simple it is to educate children? So welcome to class, Moors. All right, are we clear? It's in the dictionary, isn't it? It doesn't even take a scholar, does it? It just takes somebody to read it, doesn't it? It was never even really hidden. You tell these people they're Moors, they say, what? 
What religion is that? <laughs> they are so sleep. The sorcerers did a good job. The human beings aren't crayons. But some adults have difficulty handling that. That's why you have to have certain codes or certain pieces of information to change your state of mind so that you can see different. And until they begin to see different, you're not going to do anything with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you know, and I know that adept means expert. Am I right, brother? Now, if the experts who were given the charge and the responsibility to teach the people sold Jesus out, Yahshua, right? Sold him out. So do you expect them to come free you? Because you know if the people knew the truth, they'd been free a long time ago. But they think it's some kind of spook game, don't they? How do they think that? Because the so-called leaders have taught them that. The same leaders that got nationality cards in their pockets and know the truth and sit on it. And then when you come along to try to raise them, they say, oh man, he's just some kind of religious guy, some black thing, trying. To, he's some version of Islam, you know, and, and pray five times a day and everything be all right. Of course, when they do it, it doesn't work, does it? Because the babies still get lynched. The women still get raped. They still on nigger lines. You understand what I'm saying? And so they don't believe it because we, people keep coming from a religious perspective. Religious is not spiritual. They're not related. But how many people relate spirituality and religion as one? You know what most people do, don't they? They don't know that sorcerers have been dealing with them. They don't know that most of the people in these holy garbs are sorcerers. And what happens if you tell them that? They'll come lynch you. You throw them a life raft and they're drowning. And they'll talk about <coughs> canceling for shit. Excuse the expression. <coughs> I ain't in the plaid because <coughs> it's not my belief. And let the babies drown too. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? They're going to tell you what God wants and pray while they're getting lynched. And do it generation after generation after generation after generation and, talk, and then lie to their babies and talk about they're saved. And get mad at you because you will point it out that they can't be. So you don't go there. I mean, you understand where I'm coming from? Uh, we have limited courage to just tell the truth and recognize that all of the problems of humanity is not just the Europeans' fault. It's also our fault for violating our own law. We're violating our own principles, you know what I mean? And so we fell. So you need to know the real history so that you must rise where you fell. And you must rise with honor. So you must come into this knowledge with love and not hate. Does not mean that you're supposed to let somebody kick your butt. But don't come in this thing with hate because you're not innocent. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And we need to stop being arrogant. Right. We need to stop being self-righteous. We need to stop being so hateful. We need to stop being so vicious in our mentality with each other. And we need to understand our responsibility in society. And that there's nations on this planet. They're not crayons. They have national standards. Respect them for that. You have a national standard. Respect yourself and go back and get it. Until you do, you will be rejected by the rest of the world, and you have no standing in law, no judicial standi in courts. So issues in setting lawsuits. We know that we've been branded, although we don't accept that truth. That is the truth, but we don't accept it. And so we keep on transacting business in, in our God's name. Now the Negro, the Negro God, is they, they call him white man. No, and, and don't blame the European, because you lied on him. Just because he, the sorcerer set that up, that don't mean you have to accept that pact. You don't have to accept the pact. You don't have to be a liar because the father of a lie gave you a lie. You know that they're European sons. Respect them and don't call them out their name just like you would want somebody called out your name. Give them the same consideration that you would want from them. Just because they're seizing advantage of your dead carcass, wouldn't a vulture seize advantage of a dead carcass? Isn't that... Huh? Oh. If you choose to be dead, and black according to science means death, don't the vultures have a right to light on your carcass? Hmm? 
So although those bites might hurt, you can't blame a vulture for lighting on a dead carcass. And if we're unwilling to honor our mothers and our fathers, then whose charge is that? Is that our charge or is that his charge? Because it's an agreement. Because every man, woman, and child must honor their mothers and fathers. You're no different. I like, I, we like to think we are, but you're really not different. You just denied the Constitution, which is what they're trying to get you to do. That's why he says what? <clears throat> Fourth paragraph. I love my people, and I desire their unity. Unity is also on the Constitution, ain't it? Uh-huh. And mind, he included himself, back to their own national and divine standard because day by day they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. What is our problem? We've been unconstitutional. That's why color of law has been governing here because we've been colored people. But don't you get in the question there, elementary lesson for babies. You're not Negro, black, and colored. We agreed, didn't we? Then turn right around and start supporting color of law. No contest. No contemporary. We didn't contend nothing. No objections. Let them call us called operate in color. Is anyone a movable instrument, something, did somebody manufacture you? Yeah. Are you a li living, breathing being, thinking being? Yes. Well, what the driver's license does, it identifies or tags moving property. And you must understand that. And the reason I'm telling you these things, and the reason we're doing this particular lecture, is because if that's not addressed by the people on a serious matter, it will be used as it has been used to profile you, to extract revenues from you as chattel property. And most people uh, are under the impression that slavery in the Union State Society had ended. Well, the driver's license is one of the major instruments that is used politically to sustain slavery. And back to a principle where the prophet has said, if you can't convince your brother and sister that he's not Negro, black, and colored. There's no need to tell him anything else. What does that mean? Because his fate is sealed. So that means you must first remedy the foundation of their whole concepts. If you don't remedy that, all the other things that you're trying to reason with them with, it doesn't wash. It's, and it doesn't mean that they're insincere. It means they don't have the knowledge. And for a lack of knowledge, they're being destroyed by the day. So it is the duty of those who have the knowledge to give it to their brothers and sisters that don't belong to us. We're just channels. It is our responsibility to aid our brothers and sisters and take every opportunity that we can on every front to do what we can to the crude ability that we have to teach them and, and not go to the grave with this information. You want to raise them up? You want to reason? You know what's going to make the unity? This is what's going to make the unity. This is the prophecy. This is the mathematics. Pain. However, it is your duty to your mothers and your fathers to tell it like it is. Knowing that some of us are going to be cast into prison, knowing that some of us are going to catch opposition, is to tell it, because that's the weapon. When their mind changes, the atmosphere literally will change. The earth is sick because we're sick. You know that religion has taught them that there's no relationship, but those who know the science of Islam know that we're connected to the earth, that our sickness reflects in the earth, and she reflects back at us. And when our minds change, the literal atmosphere changes. And he can no longer practice color of law if we stop being colored people. The human beings aren't crayons, but some adults have difficulty handling that. But that's the truth. So remember, whenever you sue, always sue in your proper person. And I'm going to read a little bit from a, a, a suit 
that a brother I've been teaching over the phone for about four years in North Carolina instituted from uh, to um, Mecklenburg. They're on the run now because really he beat them. But they're they're using the tags now, which we couldn't get the Moors up here to use. You understand? Because they wouldn't stay in unity. They kept trying to fight as individuals. You know what's happening. And even though many people down there are having the problems, they got it locked up. Because what they did was sue them. Suit. But they sued their proper person. You understand? And the cop's wife was going to the mall, stuck her card in the thing. And the, no, the stuff was there. Oh, you can't do nothing. The car's dead. Start locking up their personal, personal, personal bank accounts. Do you understand? Start costing them money for harassing you. When they touch you, make it cost them. But what you want to do, where we want to go, is collectively, not individually. Because what they do, and I've warned many more of this over the years, don't get in the process of filing a lot of personal suits, not because you can't eventually win, because they can outweigh you. Why? Because you got Negroes out here who are funding them, who don't know their birthright. Your mistake is not teaching them. That's the price that you're paying for those who even have this knowledge. You suffer for not rescuing your brother because you're your brothers and your sisters keepers and you have not kept them. This is divine law. Don't think it ain't. There's a divine side of this, but it ain't got nothing to do with spooky. It ain't got nothing to do with beliefs. It has to do with what is fixed in nature. She will protect her own. And she ain't playing this nigger game no more. You want to solve this problem or you're not going to be here. That's my suggestion. Because the Romans are going to carry out their mission whether you act or not. Because they have an agenda. And right now their agenda is survival. They know they're in somebody else's house. But they also know that you're asleep because you think we Indians. Yeah, we Kitawa. Nanako, Lena Lenape, my mother's side, grandma's side, Blackfoot, my father's side, Cherokee, Kitawa. But I ain't Indian, I'm Moabite. And this ain't India. India is in Asia, and I'm not confused. And Santa Claus ain't real either. And bunny rabbits don't lay chicken eggs. However, you know and I know that our people spend billions of dollars a year on their fiction because it makes them feel good and they sell their babies out by the day. If you look up the word black, first you put a, you put a time in it and then you go, you go to M-E and then you look at Middle English and that means what? You're dealing with 1100s, 15s in that area? So already the scholar knows that black is not ancient. It doesn't even go past the 1100s. So when they're talking about the ancient black gods of Egypt, scholars know they're lying. But believers don't know better because they got the mentalities of boys and girls. You know, Pharaoh was black. Jesus was black. <laughs> this is what a scholar knows. So you go to the Middle English, right, and you put a date on it. Then it traces to OHG. OHG is Old High German, and it means pale. See why they laugh at these people? And if a prophet comes to rescue them, they'll help the Romans assassinate him and then talk about how great he was and put his, line his picture up from Yahshua that they called Jesus lie on him right on up to Il Malik that they refuse to call Il Malik to say Malcolm X. Anybody who comes to rescue them, they will sell them out. Because they like to paint pictures. They like to talk about how great they was. The Harry Tubmans, Ida B. Wells, all the rest of them. They sell them out left and right because they don't love their own. They're the greatest hypocrites on the planet. I suggest to you, if you're standing here and you just happen to be standing on your porch with your little kitty cat in your arm and confusion starts across the street, right? Because some cops or someone used color of law and beat up somebody who's branded Negro, right? and sick their dog on them, the dog bites them all up, and all this stuff, right? 
Because me and these brothers that jumped his own brothers last week, whatever. I suggest that you take your cat in the house immediately so they don't see you. Don't worry about what they're doing to him. Because they will not come and get that dog. They will not mess with those cops that beat Rodney King. They'll come burn your house down. That's what Negroes do. Do you understand what I'm saying? They always injure innocent people. They love injuring innocent people that never did anything to them and have no courage to fight those who bring injury to them. That's another reason why the civilized world has no respect for people who are branded Negro, Black, and Color because they know they're savages. But they also know they're not going to say it to you to your face because you go might burn their stuff down. But they will set up shop and make li living off you because you give up your birthright easily. And they ain't going to tell them what Jesus wants. And then put them up in the up in the grand houses that you build as a Roman, as a European, when you know he had dreadlocks. Moabite Canaanite blood looked just like you and me. And Moabite is the ancient name for Moors, your same bloodline that you deny. And we are them Jews too. And not them Yiddish who are claiming to be Jews but are not. We just don't use it because he's using it. Because i got to show you what Everybody knows about you, including your, including them guys that keep on, them, them, them co and tell pro operators that, that's on this campaign or trying to smear us. So I'm proving you that they all have this information. I'm proving you that they all know. I'm proving you're tied to this government, to this land. So when you see them attacking Moors, you better defend yourself because they're attacking your estate. Because they don't want you to wake up. Why? Because all them bonds around the world them countries are going to drop them because they're worthless paper, because they're all based on your estate. All of those bonds, those U.S. Treasury bonds around the world, are based on the Moorish estate. And now that you're waking up, they're dead paper. So bankers are committing suicide? I think somebody's helping them. Like the Dragon family maybe from China or something? I, you know, they called me from England uh, last year. You know, cause I, I talk to people from around the world. You know, uh, when you're a national, people from other countries talk to you. They won't talk to Negroes. <laughs> no, I'm no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that to, to, as a negative because they can't be trusted because they know that anybody that'll betray their own blood will betray them. Because our people, they'd be out of job two months. Do you got a country where you can go to kill the women and children because they're not Christians? because I need a job and they go in the military and start murdering their own brothers and sisters around the world, come back and start some Negro marching group with their Negro Mason leader guys who act like they don't know what's up. And we didn't get no black badges from Troop 54. So we're going to raise some money. Yeah, right. Everybody knows Negroes can't be trusted. Nobody likes black people because they're traitors. They don't know that's how the world views them. They think that the world just don't like their color. Uh, it ain't exactly what they think. But a national, they'll talk because they know you know the history. And they know if you have the courage in the face of this opposition to speak openly, and Rome didn't kill you yet, they know basically you have some sense of credibility. Not a guarantee, but some sense of credibility. But they know that most of our people, they'll sell their babies out in a minute as soon as they're out of a job two weeks. They will. And then blame the devil. Devil's a scapegoat. Because they don't have the courage to face this Roman for what he does to them every day. And everybody knows that, but that kind of spoils the game that they've been playing on our people. You see the point? So all of this thing has to be corrected. And it's not what you think it is. This is an economic, political, social dilemma that you're going to have to fix. And if you don't fix it, don't worry, everything that you work for will fail. Whether it's business, economics, your personal relationships, etc. Because Allah and Allah is feminine, not masculine. It's unpleased and is set in force for our destruction unless we fix it. What we have at this point is things are out of balance. We have to bring balance back. Balance has to be brought back, peace has to be brought back because the falsehood must be dissipated. Once you understand that, you understand the value of that nationality card. 
you understand that when, when good astrologers come on the scene, and there's very few, all right? So you have good sorcerers, and you have negative sorcerers. Negative sorcerers have, have pretty much had control of everything. And so they have pretty much set these institutions up to their favor. And the world is in corrupt disarray. And so when you have good shaman come, like Nubadrali, their first mission is to kill him. When Yahshua come, their mission is to kill him. They already know what they're teaching. They already know where they're coming from. They don't need to begin to understand that. They play that game for the public. They already know what's up. They get rid of them because they know that they'll kill institutions if this truth gets out. Do you understand? As, as example, just what you said. One of the issues when Yahshua was disputing with the doctors of the law, one of the first things that he did was turn over the table of the money changers to demonstrate to man, us, what is to be done with these institutions that we keep believing that's quote unquote leading us to God unqualified, right? What do people do? Turn the tables back up and been putting money back on them ever since and then calling on Jesus to come rescue them. I mean, do you see the contradiction? Meaning that they didn't get the lesson, they missed it. Noble Jolly come, and what is one of the things that he teaches? If you pay attention to the lessons Jolly teaches, his instructions bring you to fundamental truths yourself that removes the middleman. So now, if the middleman ain't there, he can't hinder you. That's why he tailored that circle seven. So tailored ancient literatures, tailored for you. Let's look at this other thing. Why were the doctors of the law so upset with Esau, with, G, with the, what people know as Jesus? He went to the scribes. He went to the pharaohs. He went to the Pharisees. He went to all those who had institutions, and he pleaded with them to tell the truth that they already knew, because they were deceiving the people. Oh, yes. Many of them agreed, but they never would do it, would they? Peace. Week after. Yes. Now, but what did he do? What is it that really pissed them off about Yahshua? And what did Yahshua do that really put a crimp in all their gears? What Yahshua did is he stopped arguing with the Pharisees. He stopped arguing with the doctors of the law. He stopped arguing with the Pharisees. He stopped arguing with the leaders. And he took the information directly to the common people. And when he did, the institution started collapsing. And so they set up his assassination. Which means all institutions live off the blood, the energies, off the common people. The truth and the lesson of Yahshua is this. Don't debate with those who should be telling. Take it to the people. Translate. No Dwali, in order to change the people, you must change their literature. That's the charge he made to the Moors. Another statement by Noble Drale. I may not take Islam across East State Street. Why do you think I'm teaching you? Pay attention to those things, and then go back to that nationality card again. Break it down etymologically and in law, and study behind it. Go into it. And then you can understand its function in society, and you can understand why everybody's scared of it. Because as soon as the people begin to really understand what he did, the institutions will start collapsing, and a new era will roll on in. It is no different than corruption runs for a time in civilization until it becomes such a burden on society 
that it collapses of its own weight. Truth accelerates it. That's why they're afraid of the truth. Other problem is, is that usually people who are suffering by it are the greater supporters of it, which is why, which is why it lives and why it's so hard to get it going. Because they keep thinking, you got to tell Pharaoh, why don't he tell us these things? You, you, you see where I'm coming from? Now it goes back to the issue. Yahshua come amongst me, say, he said, I come amongst my own, and they receive me not. Meaning that truthfully, we're never left without instruction. The people are usually hard-headed hard, hard and rebellious. And it's not that they can't understand, because those who understand it can explain it. It don't need to be vague. What happens is people recognize that they're attached to institutions that have never did them any good, but they have their faith there, and they're willing to supplant their reasoning mind, reject the truth, in order to support institutions that they know are corrupt. And so the slavery goes on. That's all the problem is. People do not want change, and they're afraid of change, but they want the benefit of change. And they will fund a feigned effort to change. But they don't want to clean no doo-doo up in their own yard. You know, and so they suffer. What happens then, it compounds itself and they pass it to their children. And then some of them come back as their children's children and don't know because they think they escaped this thing. And so we are our own mothers and fathers. We are our own ancients. And you know, the sooner we understand that this is a cycle, the sooner we'll be willing to fix this thing and stop messing around. And recognize how you've been miseducated, not just by Europeans, but by your own. These people know that you're not black. They don't doubt it. They know that you're not black. And they know that you're Moors.